The Roy Rogers Show, starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, Trigger, his golden palomino, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, his comical sidekick, and Roy's wonder dog, Bullet. Well, Riders, Trigger here is raring to go, so let's get started with today's story. Yeah, I think this box will fit right here in the back seat, Dale. Yep. Yeah. Now, you think we have everything? Yeah, I think so. Excuse me. I'm John Carter, attorney. Well, how do you do, Mr. Carter? I'm very glad to meet you. I'm Pat Brady, and this is Dale Evans. How do you do, sir? How do you do? I'm looking for someone to act as a witness to my client's last will and testament. Uh, would you be so good, Miss Evans? You see, Mr. Perry is a stranger in town, and he hasn't long to live. Oh, I'd be glad to, Mr. Carter. Excuse me, Pat. I just moved in. All my furniture hasn't arrived. <laughs> Miss Evans, this is Mr. Perry. How do you do, sir? Miss Evans has kindly consented to act as a witness. This is so kind of you. <coughs> Please be seated. Okay. As you see, it is time I put my affairs in order. If you'll sign first, Mr. Perry. <coughs> You, Miss Evans. Could you just sign on the bottom line, please. You don't know how much I appreciate this. Not at all, Mr. Perry. And I do hope you'll soon recover your health. Thank you. Thank you again, Miss Evans. Good day. Thanks for the thirty thousand bucks. Now, all we have to do is to remove the top sheet of paper. And we have Miss Dale Evans' name on a legal bill of sale. <laughs> <laughs> $30,000. Bought your ranch? Yes, he has a bill of sale with my name on it. But I didn't sign it. It's forged. You know I wouldn't sell my ranch for twice that amount. Here he comes now. Talk to him, will you, Roy? I certainly will. Mr. Colby, I'm Roy Rogers. I don't care who you are. I bought her ranch fair and square, cash on the barrel head. May I see the bill of sale? You may. The whole world can see it. Open and above board. That's the way I do business. Nobody's tricked Lewis C. Colby yet, and they aren't going to. The deal's closed, young lady, and it's too late now for you to change your mind. How can I change my mind when I never made it up in the first place? Dale, sign your name on this piece of paper. I certainly will. There. Well, they sure look the same. They are the same. What did I tell you? Roy, they can't be the same because I never signed that bill of sale. Have you signed anything lately? Nothing except my own checks. Mm, there was that last will and testament, that fellow that was dying. Oh, that was weeks ago, Pat. Who was it? A man named Perry. Mr. Carter asked me to witness his signature to his last will and testament. Who's Carter? He's a new lawyer in Mineral City. Did Carter handle this deal for you? Nope. Benson, a real estate agent in town. I never heard of either one of them. I want to take a ride into town. Wait, I'll go with you. You'll have to ride horseback because I'm taking a shortcut. All right. I'll ride. Hey, Pat, get Mr. Colby a horse, will you? <laughs> Dale, where is this Carter's office? Right over here, Roy. I don't understand. 
found this. His sign's gone. This was it. That's funny. <laughs> Right over there. Why, he's moved. It was right here. Looks like you've both been taken by a couple of confidence men. Why? Confidence men? Dale, you actually signed the bill of sale for your ranch. And this Mr. Carter, or Perry, posing as Benson sold a ranch to Mr. Colby and skipped with the money. That don't make any difference. This bill of sale is legal and it's been recorded. I can't help it if it has been recorded. If you think you... Well, Ralph, what are we going to do? If we're going to clear your ranch, we've got to find those men and get Mr. Colby's $30,000 back. Did you catch up to him, Roy? No, but looks like we're on the trail of a couple of confidence men. Confidence men? Huh. Now, Bell never had any confidence in men. Only me. <laughs> Here are your credentials. You think it'll be safe for Carl if I, uh, if I wore a mustache or a beard or something? That's the trouble with you amateurs. You think that a disguise consists of false whiskers and glasses. All you have to do is to think yourself into your part. Always remember that people accept a man on his own terms. You are not Todd Willis. You're George Orman, working for the United States Treasury. You're here on special assignment. You have the whole federal government in back of you. You are quiet, polite, and efficient. Now, who are you? George Orman, Treasury Department. Here are my credentials. Good. Who's coming? It's Leo. Hey, Carl. The roundup's over, and the extra hands are getting paid off Saturday. In cash? Well, that's what the cook said. Fine. You better get back now before someone misses you. And remember what I told you. Don't worry. I'll be there to put up a squawk when I don't get my dough. Todd, come here. What's this for? How many times do I have to tell you not to rely on one disguise? Always keep an ace in the hole. Excuse me. I'm George Orman, Treasury Department, and I've been on a trail of a gang of counterfeiters. Counterfeiters? I uh, wonder if you'd mind letting me take a look at those bills. Why, mm, no, but I just got them in the bank. Well, this gang's been passing the money through the bank. They're so good they'd fool anyone but an expert. I'm using this as my temporary headquarters. I wonder if you'd come along with me. I'll just take this money in the back room and make a few tests. Well, take care of that money, because it don't belong to me. Don't worry. I'll guard it like it was my own. What'd the sheriff say? He's put up roadblocks, like you suggested. But he said all the strangers in town have been properly identified. Including you? You're a stranger, too, you know. Now, see here, young lady. Mr. Colby's OK, Dale. I checked on him. Well, of all the nerve. Well, if you don't like what Roy's doing, why don't you leave us alone? No, sir. I'm sticking with you till I get my money or the ranch. Hey, I told Pat to wait here for me. Maybe he's over at the livery stable. Uh, hold on to that money, Mr. Orman. I'll be right back. Hey, Pat! Roy? Roy? Hey, there's a man from the Treasury Department looking at your money to see if it's counterfeit. Counterfeit? Where is he? Well, he's in that office where that fake real estate man used to hang out. He's in there. Uh, maybe you better not bother him yet. Where you gone? I've been took. Or, I mean, you've been took. What'd he look like? Oh, he was kind of tall and dark and had a brownish suit on. Let's get her out and find him. A dumbbell? 
When you had your hands on him, why didn't you grab him? Why, you... Did you see a man go by, tall, dark, wearing a brown suit? No, but I didn't see no one. I'm just the janitor here. Any sign of him? Not yet. Well, I'll take a look in that old Keen building. I talked to the janitor there. He said he hadn't seen anyone. Janitor? Well, that place has been vacant for two years. Who's that dumbbell now? Dude. Pat, you and Dale see if you can open this door. Well, don't just stand there. Come on, Mr. Colby. Hurry up, Carl. Confairs. Come on, Pat, let's get after that wagon. Looks like this is a job for both. Well, by the time we get back here with him, it'll be too dark. I'll start the first thing in the morning. Besides, there's plenty of dough here, and we haven't even scratched the surface. Yeah, but what about Roger? Much as I regret violence, he'll have to be eliminated. I'll take care of him. No, you've worked for him. Someone might recognize you. Besides, Todd's a better shot. I'll go do it now. Oh, sure. Now rush right out and stick your head into a noose. How many times do I have to tell you to first make sure you're in the clear no matter what happens? Yeah, but how am I going to do him in if I don't shoot him? Remember what I said about that ace in the hole? You're going to shoot him all right, but you're going to do it legal. Now the first thing you do is to get into Leo's clothes. Then you go into town and see the sheriff. Here, tell him your name is Fraser. This is where they left the white. a prisoner. You can book him on attempted murder of me. There must be some mistake, Roy. This here is Mr. Fraser, a detective. Detective? My credentials are in this pocket. I'm sorry I took a shot at you. I thought you were one of a gang of confidence men that I've been after. Sure. He came in late last night looking for him. They're wanted in Houston for an insurance fraud. What made you think I was one of the gang? 
I have a report in this pocket. The description of their leader exactly fits you. Now, if you'll get me out of this harness. Oh, oh of course. Certainly, certainly. Yes. Awful sorry about this, Mr. Fraser. So am I. I might have shot the wrong man. Where are you staying? In the hotel. And with your permission, I'd like to go and clean up. Go ahead. Oh, uh, if you hear any word about those crooks, Sheriff, you let me know. I sure will. Good day, gentlemen. Did you check his credentials with the agency? I, uh, did, did, well, 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 yeah, sure, of course I did. Yeah, I called Alice right away. He's working out of that office. I see. Well, I better head back to the ranch. Hello. Hello. Get me the Brighton Detective Agency in Dallas and step on it. Pat, you better see if you can find Roy. He should know this. Well, he's only been gone a couple of hours. Well, here he is now. Roy! Roy, the sheriff just phoned. He said the description of the real Fraser doesn't... doesn't fit the fellow I brought in. Well, he also said the man left the hotel without... Without paying his bill, I know. How did you know? Deduction, Dale. Deduction. <laughs> no, I checked. Well, there must be some way to catch these crooks. There is, Pat, but the oldest trick in the world. What's that? Let's go inside. I'm going to call the Mineral City News and plant a story. Hey, Carl, talk. It's Leo. Something's up. Take a look at this. Coal has been discovered on the rocking E by Mr. Lewis C. Colby. New owner of the ranch, recently the property of Miss Day Evans. How about it, Carl? How soon we move in? We don't. That's the oldest trick in the world. I can smell a trap from here. It is reported that Miss Evans is threatening to sue, claiming that not only was the ranch obtained by fraud, but that in the sale no release of mineral rights was included. Let me see that. Hmm, I could be wrong. That piece about Dale Evans sounds genuine. Get me that dude outfit out of the suitcase. Hey, Roy. Someone coming. A horseback. Looks like they've taken the bait. You know what to do, Mr. Colby. Leave it to me. I took the lead in all the plays. A high school, that is. Good. Come on, Dale. Duck down. Mr. Colby, I take it? If you're one of Dale's snooping lawyers, you can get right off this property. I'm not a lawyer, Mr. Colby. I'm a financier. For my card, sir. Arthur Graham, Wall Street. Not the big multimillionaire. I've been blessed with good fortune, sir, and a head for business. Oh, my friend uh, Walter Howard and I are here on a hunting trip, but I always find time for a good investment. Uh, if you're talking about my mine, it isn't for sale. I'm not interested in buying it, Mr. Colby. But you will need money to operate it. And that's where I come in. Uh, come to think of it, I can't very well finance it alone. Good. However, this is hardly the place to talk business. Suppose you come with me over to my cabin and meet my friend Howard. As my attorney, he can advise us on what steps are to be taken. Well, all right. If I do go in on this with you, and I haven't said I will, it's got to be on a 50-50 basis. I'm sure we can come to terms on an agreement, Mr. Colby. Hey, he looks just like the man that got me to sign that paper. Yeah, me too. Let's get our horses and follow him.
We can't lose Mr. Colby. This way. and meet my friend. Hello, Walter. Been waiting long? No, Arthur. I just got here. Mr. Colby, this is Mr. Walter Howard. How do you do, sir? How do you do? The contract's all ready for you. Just sit here. Keep a sharp lookout, Bill. You stay here. You understand, of course, this is only a temporary agreement. We'll sign a permanent partnership later. Uh, isn't that right, Howard? That's right, Arthur. You can sign on this bottom line. I wouldn't if I were you. Nice work, Mr. Colby. Back up. Hand me that contract, Mr. Colby. Take it along as evidence. You won't be needed, Rogers. As I have so often said, always keep an ace in the hole. My sentiments exactly. Leo, get his guns. All right, reach for the sky or I'll blast you. Looks like Rogers trumped your ace, Mr. Saunders. <laughs> glad to get that fake bill of sale back. You're not nearly as glad as I was to get my money back. <laughs> Crooks never get to keep what they steal. It's only the honest money that stays in a man's pocket. That's for sure. Hey, what does Pat think he's doing over here? Oh, Pat thinks that since I bought the ranch next to yours, Roy, I ought to learn to be a real cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Pat. How are you doing, Pat? Oh, hi, folks. Well, Mr. Colby, it's just like I've been telling you. There's really nothing to it. You just uh, back off, see, and take a running start, and you hit that bottom stirrup, then your other foot hits this other stirrup, and then you're right up in the saddle. But, Pat, I'm getting too old for that kind of stuff. Oh, shucks, it's just as easy as falling off a log. Now, I'll show you. Now, here's the way it goes. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> you better stick to Nellie Bell. No true words were ever spoken, Roy. Me and my cotton ideas. What happened? It worked before. <laughs> <laughs>
happy. Pray.